You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa De Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Have you ever tried to practice meditation, but have no idea if it's working or even if you're doing it right? Wouldn't it be awesome if there was something to let you know when you're in the zone to let you know to do more of that? Well, there is something that does exactly that. It's called Muse. Muse is a brain sensing headband that helps you find more calm, sharper focus, and better sleep. It does this by measuring your brain waves and lets you know exactly when you're in a meditative state. It's an awesome tool for kids and for adults alike. You can get 15% off any Muse product by clicking the link in the show notes below. Check them out at choosemuse.com. And again, don't forget to use that link for 15% discount at checkout. Hi, and welcome back to the Free to Be Mindful podcast. I hope that you're feeling good, looking good, and doing better in this world than you were yesterday. So I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to participate in one of my most recent passion projects, which is called Mindfulness with People of Color. Now, you know, mindfulness is my jam, but this is very specific for people of color. I am one of the co-creators of Mindfulness with People of Color, and our goal is to change the narrative and educate our black and brown communities on what mindfulness has to offer while sharing space. Because, of course, the way that we were born, raised, and the way that we show up in the world changes the way that we are perceived, as well as the way in which we interact with others and the way in which we seek peace. Beginning on September 7th, we'll be migrating over to Zoom and we'll be offering weekly Zoom sessions on Tuesday evenings. If you have any questions or would like more detail, you can always email me or you can find us over on Instagram at mindfulpoc. So this week we are talking about doing it scary because really so many events in our lives, we find scary at first, but once we take that first step, we kind of ride the wave. We've really experienced so many things that at first we may find overwhelming or scary or, oh, I don't think I can handle this, but take a moment to think back on some of these moments that may apply to you, such as literally taking your very first step, which you may not remember, but if you're understanding what I'm saying right now, you know that you did it despite most likely falling on your butt or on your face or on your knees quite a few times. And I am going to assume that you're pretty successful at walking today. Remember going to your first day of school. Now, I don't remember my personal first day experience. However, I do remember dropping off my son on his first day of public school pre-K and I cried and he did too, (laughs) but then he got over it and then I was forced to get over it as well. Remember learning how to ride a bike without training wheels for the first time, surviving middle school, which is truly a jungle out there. Feeling overwhelmed on the first day of high school, especially if the building was very big to navigate around. Asking someone out or accepting someone's invitation on a first date. Trying out for a team or organization. 
taking the driving test, <laughs> I remember having the feeling of how are people actually letting me get behind the wheel of a car, which happened to be the same feeling, believe it or not, that I felt when I took my son home from the hospital after giving birth, thinking, I'm not ready. Am I ready? Do you think I'm ready? <laughs> it is quite a feeling. Think about applying for college perhaps if you've dormed, and all of the experiences, some of which could be filed under the less than smart choices tab of life. Think about interviewing for that job, deciding for which job to go for, when to stay, when to leave. Think about buying the house, signing the long-term mortgage or a long-term lease. Think about starting your own business and bringing a life into this world, whether it be a human kid or a puppy kid. We experience fear all of the time and we succeed at overcoming fear so very often. It's important to keep in mind that fear exists to keep us safe and we all either fight, flight or freeze. And instead of running away from it all of the time, even when scary, even when overwhelmed, we can embrace it to handle situations appropriately. Because again, we all do a lot of things scared. We just seem to overlook the fact that we conquer the fear and then we move on to the next until we're stressed and overwhelmed or maybe scared by something new until we can overcome that next fear. So after you understand that you'll always have some level of fear, I want you to name it and embrace it. What exactly has you scared? Really think about it, reflect on it, say it out loud and embrace that fear because that fear that you have is going to help you push past it and accomplish the goal, or whatever it is that you're working on. And you may ask yourself, how do we know that things will work out? Well, I asked you back, how do you know that they won't work out or indeed that they will work out if you never try? And if you try, is this to say that everything will always work out? (laughs) <laughs> Not in the slightest. I definitely have my own share of things that haven't worked out because we've all fallen on our butts and our knees when learning to walk. We've all fallen off our bikes. We get back in the car after an accident. We date again after heartbreaks. We keep interviewing after not getting the job. Seems like you get the idea. We all keep going because when we really think about it, we as humans are resilient. Now, it's just a matter of what level of resiliency do you have, do you experience, and do you push? Do you let your fear hold you back from your dreams and the things that you want to conquer or accomplish, or do you push and persevere? Now, once you've named and embraced your fear, take the time to educate yourself so that you can make well-informed decisions, even if the fear continues to live inside you. So I think about when I was forming my business, Free to Be Mindful, and even this podcast, the Free to Be Mindful podcast, I was scared. There was a lot of fear that lived within me. But I asked questions. I Googled everything that I was ever thinking about. I talked to people who have had the same experiences. I took time to reflect on those answers and then to reflect within myself to really get in touch with my own intuition and to make the choices that worked best for me. So whatever you'd like to conquer practice and seek support when needed. And what I mean by practice is I'll share a little secret with you. I talk to myself in the mirror, like it's nobody's business. (laughs) I have conversations in the shower with imaginary people. And I do these things because I like to practice how it feels like what 
the sense is when I actually say things out loud, what my face does and how things and fears feel in my body. It's great to have a practice round before doing the actual real thing. And lastly, my friends, have faith. And this doesn't necessarily have to be connected to a higher being, although it can be. Have faith, though, that opportunities will come your way. Have faith that you can conquer what you choose. Believe in yourself and believe that you can do what you set your mind to, even if you're scared. Stay positive and stay flexible because with that concept of faith, we also have to keep in mind that we may have to pivot when needed. And we all saw in 2020 how much we had to pivot. So sometimes it's listening to what you feel in that moment, but also making space to check in with yourself to make sure that this is still what your heart desires. And this is still what you are perhaps physically, emotionally, even spiritually able to do. And finally, for real this time, visualize yourself accomplishing the goal. Then visualize yourself as already having conquered the fear that is currently holding you back. There is something to it when people say to become a millionaire, act like one. So you've heard me sprinkle out throughout these past few minutes together that mindfulness helps with this all. Again, mindfulness is paying attention to the right here and right now with kindness and with curiosity. And when you create the space, right, that's the first thing is just making space to get in touch with yourself, to become aware of what you're doing and what you're thinking and perhaps why in a moment. Once that space is created, it's then that the curiosity will appear and you will have the space to listen to that intuition, to listen to your gut, to listen to your heart. And that will be the GPS that really navigates you in the direction that you need to go in. But that is truly available to you once you've created the space to become more self-aware and to get in contact more with yourself. You can do it. I believe in you. And now you must believe in yourself. Do it scared because you can. So right now, regardless of where you are or what you're doing, take this moment to create that space and think about what you want to accomplish. Think about what it is that you desire, that you want, whether it be personally or professionally. Now think about what it is that's holding you back. Where is that fear rooted in? And why is it there? Once you've thought about it, name that fear and tell it to pack its bags because there is no space for it here. Visualize what you look like with this goal accomplished. What is it that you act like? Even think about how you sound like, what do you speak like, and even what do you smell like? Put all of your senses into the visualization of having already accomplished your goal despite your fears. Keep that vision in your mind and truly see yourself in this light. Picture it as clear as possible so that you can keep this picture in your pocket, in your mind, and use it whenever that fear creeps back in. And now take a breath in through your nose, exhale fully, and go be that person. Have a great week. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's show. It would mean a ton if you took this moment to review the Free to Be Mindful podcast on the platform you catch your favorite shows. That quick and easy act lets me know what you enjoy and it helps others find the podcast too. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can listen along next week. In the meantime, I welcome you to catch me on social media at Counselor V De Jesus. And as always, remember, in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Catch you next week.